for the national championship because that's what it is, you know. The, 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 the Rumbles are national championships and World Clash is the international championship. So if your sound system in your area, your community, is selected to go to the national championships to become the national champion and then represent the country in the international championships, you would think that these sound systems would be able to bring two, three hundred people to cheer for them, right? Because they're going to the national championships. That's not the situation. Think about, you know, you know, again, I say keep people, we, we got to always make it make sense, right? Um, I struggle with the Rumble series. I, I found, you know, one and two good sounds in the Rumble series. Um, some of the sound systems who got the opportunity to be part of the Rumble series, they did nothing after the Rumble series on their own to promote themselves or to keep their, their thing going up. So I, I kind of want to know if it's my job to like save every single sound system. No, you know. That, okay, okay, that's true. But me never involved in a rumble, and me do, and me the panic back of you regular. Well, every sound system, you know, you and a million sounds would be able to say that they weren't involved in the rumble series, right? Um. So, but let's look at how much was involved in the rumble series. You know. So I'm not saying that the rumble series. Uh, reflected every single bad sound in the world. I would be lying to say that. Some people got a shot that maybe probably didn't deserve it. Other people right. got a sh um, got a shot that deserved it. But it was a solid effort in my company saying, "Listen, we built an empire off of sound system culture. Um, we don't need to do this anymore. But I'm gonna do it because I wanna. I want." the industry to be vibrant. Let me explain something to you, right? And again, this is needs to be common sense. If the industry becomes null and void, then the conversation also goes away. And when the conversation goes away, Jay, guess what? All of our legacies also become unimportant. So there's no reason to talk about Kilimanjaro versus, versus Addis in 1995. There's no reason to talk about how great Stone Love is or Mataran is or Saxon is or whoever, right? If there's no more arena. So our first obligation to the sport is to preserve the sport, not to ourselves. Because if there's no more conversation about the sport, then there's no reason to talk about the great people who played the sport. It has to make sense. So we cannot be thinking about being selfish. We cannot be thinking about um, only wanting things to be done to the, the traditional way because things are changing. Times are changing, right? So everyone, including the troopers and the Matarans and the man that would make the big money out at the base out of this, Everybody should be giving back to the sport. So I give back to the sport. And, you know, whether I do it the right way or the wrong way, I'm criticized for it. But what about the other people who made money like me? What are they doing for the sport? They're being praised for their legacy. That's it. Right? We are the only culture, both dance hall and, you know, artist-wise, where... We don't think that we're obligated to invest back into the culture. Right. All of these, all of these big men that you see, and I'm not saying this to be a jerk. I'm saying it to be truthful. Chin Chan saved Sound Clash by himself, right? But all of these brethren, whether it's a, it's a Saxon or B Rocket or a Stone Love or whoever that you and I know had a very strong cultural impact and a legacy in the culture, has an obligation to open the door for the man that we have come behind. We don't see that happening. And because there is no, you know, no mentoring going on, directly or indirectly, the culture is suffering for that, bro. It's, it's just a bottom line. If you, you know, if you look at the days of old, the artists were mentoring, right? 
The sound systems were mentoring. That's not happening anymore. You say to yourself, okay, um, what has Mataran done for sound system culture in the sense of ushering in a new sound system? What has Trooper done for ushering a new sound system and building a platform? You know what I mean? And I'm not saying this because I'm saying that they're bad people. I'm saying this because these are the brethren that made the career and made the money. Panta, all of these brethren. If they were to come back to sound system culture and say, yo, you know what say, me eat that food off of that thing, yeah? So let me open up another door. Then everybody wouldn't have to depend on Irish and Chin, brother. Because you could be at the Base Odyssey Sound System Clash Tournament. Right? And you could be the Base Odyssey um, um, champion. And then over there, so you have the Mataran uh, um, series of champions. And then over there, so you have the Panther series of champions. Right? And those sound systems would be, uh, what would I say? Highly endorsed because of the, 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 you know, the tournaments that they're coming from. Yeah. And it would help to generate a lot of more interest in, 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 in the sport. But nobody thinks about it like that. People, you know, what they say is, yo, Chin never picked me for the dots. You know what I mean? I eat that thing, this, that, 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 and the third. But they got to understand that at the end of the day, Mixed Master J, I'm the only company trying to push the thing forward. Panda level, yeah, where may I try to push it forward? And there's going to be some good things that I do, but I'm going to make some mistakes along the way as well. It's only natural, bro. Yeah, real talk. I mean, you 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 are a businessman. Everybody knows, or anybody who has any dealing with it, you, they know that you're the ultimate businessman. You, they they you 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 look at the game, you look at the playing field, you see what you can do to what you can't do, right? So no, from 1999 till May 1st, 2022, world clash, the end. Is it really the end? It's the end, man. It's 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 the end. Um. It's the end for a whole lot of reasons. Um, I personally think that sound clash culture has become too dependent on tradition, right? Okay. So traditionally, because we're stuck in the old way of doing things, right? And we're not willing to break away from that. I feel like we're missing a lot of opportunities in sound system culture, right? Um, I feel like a lot of the obvious things that could be changed or incorporated, people are having resistance to it because that's not how it was done in the old days, right? Right. The world clash format, which I created, and many people kind of nicknamed it the, the microwave sound clashing, right? Um, it's been in existence for like 25 years now, right? We've been using this format. I think it's time for another format. I think the format has done its time in sound system culture. And I think it's time for maybe another younger, you know, smarter chin to evolve and come up with another era of sound system culture or sound system competing that will allow us to spiral into another 20 years, another two decades, right? I right. feel but, like... But, but are you going to help, being that you're saying it's the end, yeah? Are we saying then, uh, when you say the end, is Sound Clash dead? Because I'm seeing clashes being kept all around the world, yeah? All around the world. Not only your promotions, but varied people are keeping Sound Clash. So you're saying if it's the end and you're hoping that maybe... The, the format will change and a, a younger a younger chin will then evolve or come around to be able to take it to a different level. You were saying earlier about mentoring the sound systems and then to mentor like the younger sounds. Are you going to put yourself in a position that you're going to be able to mentor somebody to take the class scene to another level? Yeah, but believe it or not, um, my, my doors have always been open. It's, it's, it's been that way. Like anyone that you speak to and, and, and you know, the, the, the problem with this industry is um, it's the internet, social media, right? So social media would have you believe that 
you know, Irish and Chin has always been trying to take the industry for themselves. And we've always been trying to fight out other other promoters and blah, blah, blah. Um, and it's, it, it, it's, it's so far from the truth. There's, there, there would never be a promoter that can come on this live or any live for that matter and say, yo, I called Chin to, for his advice and Chin told me to go kick rocks. It's never been that situation, right? Um, the few of them who have reached out for advice, I've always given them genuine advice, right? What has happened with a lot of the promoters who came into Sound Clash, instead of them coming in to better the industry, they allow the internet people to make them create a rivalry against Irish and Chin. So it's no longer I'm coming in to be a Sound Clash promoter or I'm coming in to start a business as you know a Sound Clash promoter. It always ends up somehow being my promotion versus Chin. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that is where the problem went. I, I remember back here in, um, in even in New York, we used to have this 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 virgin named Andrew Digital that yeah, ended yeah. up. Andrew, you know, I'm a friend, man. Andrew, I'm a friend. Yeah. Andrew, Andrew spent a lot of time and money nurturing sound systems and you know getting them you know getting them into the culture. Um, as it started out with me and Andrew, we were good. I remember, you know, being in Jamaica and Andrew keeping a clash and linking me and me um, getting Charlie Blacks. I think it was Charlie Blacks at the time. And, um, you know, I had the whole office and stuff set up in Jamaica and got them in and I was sending him commercials to support his thing. Um, that's the part of the story that he doesn't say. He will never tell you that story because that's not the popular story, right? Um, eventually, he bought into the narrative of him becoming my rival because the internet pushed him in that direction. And, you know, I, I will say this proudly. Once you start to shoot in a mega shoot, right? Because I feel like um, I've played a huge contribution to the industry where now I make the look of why I come. And I'm not saying Andrew's a look of what, right? I'm saying now I make the look of why I come shoot. I'm in a shoot back because I put in the work. So, if, if respect is to be given, it has to be given both ways. So anybody who turns their promotional company into a, a challenger or a rival, I'm not going to welcome them with mentorship, if you get where I'm coming from, uh, um, Jay. I'm going to shoot back. So the industry has always created these Irish and Chin rivals for the better or for the, for the what would you call it now? For entertainment. It's to the to the people on the social media. It's entertaining to see two sound class promoters cussing each other and going back and forth. But the you know it's not something that we would start or have started. Um, I think that it's time for new promoters, right. right? I think it's time for new promoters. I think it's time for promoters with new ideas. I welcome that because again. If Sound Clash dies, then my legacy dies with Sound Clash. There's no reason to talk about World Clash. There's no reason to talk about Irish and Chin if there's no more Sound Clash conversation. So why would I want that conversation to die? Right? I realize that I'm up in age now. You, know, you see the grays and stuff. Right? <laughs> it's, it's, time, it's time for new promoters to come in with new ideas. When I got into the industry in 96 97 i had to fight my way in the sound they wouldn't help us the people who was running sound business during that time they didn't want us in you know the secret to irish and chin you know is simply this we gathered all of the sound systems that was locked out of the industry and we created a platform for them so the major sound systems you know, and, and just to give you an ideal, no disrespect, Stone Love. Remember in the in the, in the early 90s or late 90s, early 2000s, there were a bunch of sound systems that Stone Love wouldn't play with because they might deal with warting and Stone Love I deal with juggling thing. They might deal with hardcore tracing and Stone Love I deal with, you know, a different type of entertainment, right? right. So because Stone Love was the 
major movement sound system at the time. If Stone Love says to a promoter, that's not a sound that I'm willing to play with, what do you think is going to happen? Those sound systems are going to get locked out. So the Jaros were locked out. The Black Cats were locked out. The Bass Addicts were locked out. All of these sound systems that we started with in our earlier days, they were basically locked out of the broader scope of the culture, right? And we put them together and we were able to create something that, you know, became what it is today. I'm saying that to say that I don't want that to happen to another promoter coming in, a young promoter with new ideas. I don't think it would make sense for the industry to lock them out. I think it would make sense to help them get in because those promoters may bring in a younger fan base into the culture as well. And they may do it a little bit different. Um, to go back to your original question, 25 years of one format is a very long time, bro. You know what I mean? Um, I think that the microwave format has done its time. It did what it's supposed to do. It lasts for two decades. If we're going to have Sound Clash go for another two decades, we got to get another format going. We got to have new rules and new ways to entertain and just a whole new different culture that's an offspring of what we know today. And you, 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 you did start that because when you did World Clash Reset with Metro Media One, everybody was complaining. They said, well, oh, you know, Devalu Clash, I make 45 player. But actually, Sky Juice used the savvy and used three quarter 45 and a quarter dog player to win. When, when I put Sky Juice and Jazzy T, and there's Metro Media and Renaissance in World Clash, everybody started to cuss me. Right? Um, um, Reset was an acronym that I came up with in 2012. And the acronym was um, Restoring Exciting Sound System Entertainment Together. That's what it means, you know, Reset. Okay. Restoring Exciting Sound System Entertainment Together. That together to me meant to take down the wall between juggling sound systems and class sound systems and just look at it as sound systems competing, right? Because when I got into the industry, everybody sound clashed, right? Stone Love was clashing, a freak was clashing, everybody was clashing, right? Um, so I wanted to recreate that. So I, I came up with this analogy, reset. Um, and it worked. You know what I mean? It brought some excitement. It, it brought some energy back into, into the thing. Um, but traditionally, Mixed Master J, you have sound systems who still have this thing in the front of their minds that playing 45s makes you weak. So even though you have a competition where 45s can be played, and there are good 45s out there where can mush up a dance, to them, if you're playing 45, you're weak. So they still stick to this traditional way of defining who's a big sound and who's a small sound. So you see right. again where tradition is getting in the way of progress. So tradition is getting in the way of progress when it comes to sound system culture. Because at the same time, these sound people who argue about um, not playing 45s and dub plates should be, you know, a dub plate and Mix Master J play too much 45. I hear that sound that, oh, oh, oh man, can win dance, I play so much 45. The same man who's making that argument is the same person com com complaining that dub plates are costing too much money. How do you win? Again, make it make sense. If dub plates are costing too much money, my brother, right? And we have an industry that is trying to be solely reliant on dub plates. Are we not building an industry that is 100% dependent on artists? How can that work? How does that work? How does it work when collectively we have all of this spending power 
but we are allowing artists to dictate the future of our arena, right? But we have no say so in the future of their arena. Make it make sense. I just want to read you a comment. I want to read you a comment from a lady, Marcia Slim. She says, I love Sound Clash. It's fun. The dub plates now are more expensive. And in her opinion, she doesn't like when them, them, them use the, uh, derogatory terminology as in suck mud and blah, blah, blah. Other than that, Sound Clash is fun. So this is, this is from a female because in the industry, we don't see enough females at, at a war dance. Unless you go to certain different Caribbean um, countries, you might see a few more females there. But you don't really predominantly see a lot of females in, 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 in a war dance. You don't see a lot of female selectors. I know you have um, the girl from Notorious Sound and um, you have veterans like Tasha Roses who can clash. Maybe the new promoters might be able to look at you know, involving maybe a, a female selector or a female sound system in the arena then to make it more exciting and involving more 45 and, you know, utilizing what's, you know, some sound systems cannot afford the skilly bangs and the rare rays that are costing thousands upon thousands of dollars, but can use simple, a simple skilly bang, maybe 45 and win a dance. Because we, we all know being on the back of field, a 45 can kill any dub plate if it's selected at the right time with the timing and speech. You can use 45. Sky Juice has proven that in your uh, in your branding in, in World Cup in World Class Reset. You understand? In, in, so, my, in my in my opinion, and this is just me. And remember, I've dedicated a very long time to Sound Clash culture, and I love it. I love Sound Clash culture, right? Um, which is why every step of the way, we, I include some type of sound clash element in whatever I'm doing, right? Um, I believe that the next journey for sound system culture and competing has to just be people go to a sound clash to have fun, meaning that the selector's job is for boss the dance. Whatever that selector has to do to boss the dance is what he, they should be judged on. So if you get 15 minutes to play, you get 10 minutes to play, you get 20 minutes to play, what the competition should be is who brought the most vibes to the event. Vote on that. So if a man play 20 minutes of dub plates and he mash up the place, don't judge him because he played dub plate. Judge him based on the vibe that was created by the dub plates. If a man yeah. does 20 minutes of 45, don't judge them because of the 45. Judge them on the vibe that they create, created with playing those 45s. And if somebody wants to play a mixture of dubs and 45s, that's what they should be judged on, right? Now, the people who we are trying to get into sound clash culture are the younger kids. Most of the younger kids are not listening to dance or street. They might no. listen to reggae street. They might listen to Afrobeats. They might listen to reggae. They might listen to hip hop. So we also have to be receptive to the potential that some of these new competitions will also feature other genres of music. But if those other genres of music can be introduced during a set of 20 minutes and bust the place, allow them to be introduced and allow it to be fun. Because again, Steve, I mean, Jay, your, your kid, Jay, is not going to a party to listen to music that they're not interested in. No. Right. So you gotta, guys got to ask yourself this. And, and we got to be honest with ourselves, right? A lot of us are old enough now to have kids that's 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Many of we were in a sound clash, a big youth. How much of our kids are coming to the sound clash? Remember, you know, when we were 17, 18, 16, we were in the sound clash, Jay. We were there. How many of our kids, we have dedicated our whole life to a culture. How comes with Pitney them, if the boys are not in the sound clash now? They have, no, they have no understanding or no interest in it. 
So Jay, if our kids don't have any interest in it and they've been seeing their dad do it for so many years, why do you think other kids are going to be interested in coming in? All of this is common sense, right? We, you know, it's tradition getting in the way of progress. And if we don't look at it as that, then we are going to become extinct with what we're doing. And Sound Clash is really going to be dead. Now, um, I know a lot of you have been mad at me because I've started this whole series on my YouTube channel saying that um, what killed Sound Clash, right? And then also I have World Clash, the end coming up on May the 1st. So many of you are connecting the dots and say, oh, Chin is ending sound on World Clash because World Sound Clash is dead. You know what I mean? He's saying that Sound Clash is dead. Um, no, nah, that's not what I'm saying. Right? World Clash the end is ending because I feel that the format, that format has done its time in the dance hall space. So let's get that clear. So I'm looking at it and I'm saying, listen, let's end it on a high note because World Clash has never flopped and, and, and has always delivered the energy that you come to see, right? So I want to end it that way, right? Also, let me just put this in before I say what I want to say. We also have to understand that a lot of the world-class superstars, one, are older. Their performances are not the same as they, it used to be. Let's be honest with what we're saying, right? And many of them, you know, when you go to them and say world class, or them say, why well, chin how much world class me for win? Me would have done with eight, me done with five, me done with four. You know what I mean? So that alone shows you that the world class brand, you know, is is coming to that that time, right? Now let's look at my whole sound clash is dead thing that I've been saying, and let's interpret it for what I am saying. Sound clash is dead as it relates to the vibe that you and I grew up on, right? It's gone. It's not there. It's dead, right? Am I being ignorant and acting as if there's no sound clashes keeping across the world? I would be stupid to say that, right? However, the vibe, the energy, the camaraderie between artists and sound systems that used to be present that made the industry so great is no longer there. All of those elements have disappeared, right? Um, so if you look at the series, each episode, I go through one reason why the vibe has faded. So episode one, I will pick one thing and say, this is one of the reasons why Sound Clash, what helped to kill Sound Clash. This is one of the reasons that helped to kill Sound Clash. Now, a lot of people are upset with what I'm saying, and of course they will be because Chin said it, right? Um, we got to ask ourselves this because it has to make sense, Miss Master J. Are we defining Sound Clash being alive by the amount of people attending the events, or are we defining it by how many events are being held? Because that's the confusion in the conversation, my brother, right? right? That's the confusion. You just said to me that you see clashes being held all over the world. So sound clashes alive. And then I can turn back and I can say to you, but that's BS, bro. Because it don't matter how much sound clash keeps. It's about how much people are attending each sound clash. Right? So again, the argument, if people wish to just be level-headed and put some thought before they open their mouth, they should say to themselves, yo, what's Chin trying to highlight right now? Because I know Chin loves Sound Clash. Chin is always doing something in sound system culture. So Chin can't actually believe that, you know, Sound Clash business is over. What I'm pointing out is simply this. We, can, we have to stop judging the, the vibe and the, the livelihood of sound clash culture by the amount of events that's being held. Because if only 150 or 200 people are in, this, in these events, is it not dead? Come on. If, if we have a month globally, right, 
that globally that 10 sound clashes keep. I can gamble with you. I can put money on the table and say to you, yo, 